Hey guys, this is Justin at the Survivor Review, and today we're talking about the first episode of the new series from HBO based on the classic graphic novel Watchmen. Now I haven't mentioned Watchmen much or even at all, I think, on this channel, but I am a huge fan of that book. It's one of my favorite graphic novels. It has some of my favorite characters in it. It's, it's a masterpiece. And I'm even a fan of the Zack Snyder movie, despite his flaws. There's a lot of really good things in there, though it has a lot of issues. So I was really curious about this show. I can't really say I was excited for it, but I was really curious because I didn't know what it was. Because the series is a sequel to the book. It's not an adaption of it, and it focuses on a lot of new and different characters. So I was really curious because I was like, what exactly is this? What's it going to be like? So I checked out the pilot episode, and I really liked it. I thought this was a really interesting pilot, not one of the greatest ever. There's a lot of interesting things in it that make me want to see more of it. Because, like I mentioned, it is set 30 years after the book, set in modern day in 2019. And essentially, with the way the story begins, it might add more stuff from the uh, graphic novel as it goes on, but from this pilot episode alone, it really feels like its own kind of like small scale story just set in the world of Watchmen, just, you know, set in modern day in the world of that story. Which I found really interesting, because most of the Watchmen stuff in the episode is just kind of like easter eggs and kind of like background like world building. And there's a lot of good kind of subtle world building in this episode. There is no like intro for it that goes like, oh this is the alternate world and this is all the different things in it. It just kind of throws you into it and reveals stuff as it goes along, which is what's going to make it really interesting for future episodes. Um, I will say, I think you can watch this without having read the book. There's definite connections and a lot of kind of some of the world building stuff definitely ties back to the book. And it maybe as the show progresses there might be more connections. But just going off this episode, like I said, um, I feel like you could watch it without having, you know, knowledge of the book because, like, the story focuses on these brand new characters who have, as we know, no ties to the book and to the characters in that story. It's just there's a lot of kind of like Easter egg kind of references and world building to the story right now. That's all we got at this moment. Again, it's just the first episode. So, uh, spoiler free without kind of delving into it because I want to kind of delve into just a lot of the details and stuff, but if you're just watching this because you're curious about the episode and is it worth checking out, like I said, I do say it's worth checking out. It's really well acted, like the cast in the episode is phenomenal. Uh, Regina King as our main character is great. I love Don Johnson as like the police chief type character. He's really good. The direction for this episode was pretty great. There's a lot of good visual cues in there and a lot of good like visual symbols kind of like in the book. Like there's a lot of great moments where you see something making, making out a smiley face or there's a lot of stuff having to do with clocks and everything. So there's a lot of that kind of visual imagery and like themes and stuff from the book in here which I thought was really cool. I thought it was very well handled, very well directed. The music is phenomenal. The music is great. I love the music in the show. So there's a lot of great things going for it, except it's a really interesting start. It kind of, like I said, throws you into this world without really explaining anything to it, which might be confusing to some viewers, but I'm sure more, more will get explained as it goes along, and it's a good setup. But it's definitely interesting, I would definitely say check it out, especially if, like, if you're a fan of the book, there's a lot of interesting things in here, and also if you're not, I think it's a really cool and unique show, so i definitely say check it out. Alright, so delving into this episode, like, spoilers and all, this episode begins like, so far removed from the Watchmen story, taking place in Tulsa in 1921 during this huge massacre where these white supremacists are destroying this town, and you see all these black people getting killed, and you see this family and their son are running away, and the father ends up putting the son on, on this cart to get away, and then you see this kid later on after the cart gets hit and blown up and everything, and you see him with this, like, this paper that says, like, you gotta help this boy, and then he picks up this baby that's lying there and, like, walks away, and that's the intro to the episode, and I'm watching this just like, okay, I didn't expect that, and that's nothing like Watchmen, but then we fast forward to modern day to 2019, and you see this guy in this, like, pickup truck getting pulled over, and the cop approaches him, and he has this, like, bandana over his mouth, like, covering his face, basically, and honestly, when I first saw that, I'm like, this just seems suspicious. I don't know why my first instinct was, like, are the cops bad guys? Because that just seemed like a bad guy thing. But then you realize later on that it's not, because the guy ends up getting back into his car and basically calling in the station, like, he's like, I, this guy is very suspicious, he had a Rorschach mask in his glove compartment, like, I, I need my gun, because apparently, in the way the world is now, 
For the cops, there's rules that they can't carry weapons on them and they have to get permission to actually use them. So in the guy's like car, there's a gun in this holster that's basically locked and he has to call the station to unlock it. And right as he's about right as he gets them to unlock it for him, all of a sudden he just gets unloaded with bullets. And you see the guy standing out there wearing a Rorschach mask. And it turns out that he's part of this white supremacy group called the Seventh Cavalry that basically goes around with Rorschach masks and spouting out like Rorschach dialogue. Because there's this video of them watching that they're watching in the station, and they're basically like repeating lines of dialogue that like Rorschach had in Watchmen, but saying it just like in this total different interpretation of the dialogue, because basically they're just, you know, bad guys. So I thought that was really interesting. So that's kind of the main conflict so far in the show. And that's why I was saying how the show felt kind of small scale, because it kind of just feels like this small town dealing with these white supremacists. It's not like world threatening. And I'm like, okay, that's interesting. It's not what I would have expected, but I liked it. I liked all the world building and all kind of the callbacks to the comics. And there's a lot of ties to the squid attack from the ending of the book. I did see in one shot in the science classroom, there's a poster in the background that says anatomy of a squid. But then there's that one really weird scene that's like not explained at all, where while driving down the road, Regina King and her daughter, they, they hear the siren go off. And their reason, they just go like, oh man, and they pull, everyone pulls off to the side of the road. People are on the street with like, a, they put on umbrellas and they're running away. And all of a sudden it just starts raining raining like little squids like all over the city and it's just like it's a really nasty scene but only lasts like a few seconds and then when it's over they just get up and like wash it off and they're just like oh, dang it like like it's a normal occurrence and it's just a weird thing I, I don't know what that is is that like fallout from like the squid attack like after that squid attack in the book now does it like rain squids every once in a while it's this really weird thing and that's kind of one of the connections to the book that like if you're watching this without any knowledge of the book you might be confused as like why is there squids but even if you know the book you're still kind of confused because you're like why is that happening but that was really interesting that was really weird i like that robert redford is still the president even though it's been 30 years since like he became president at the end of the book he's still president and a lot of people don't like him apparently because he's the one that implemented the rule about the guns and everything and stuff there's a lot of race stuff in this episode which i thought was kind of interesting because i feel like the book didn't play too much into race that really wasn't one of the themes of like the book was race but there's a lot of that at play here especially you know Got a lot, I got like this main character who's black going against this group of like evil white supremacists. But you know, I don't mind it. I got no problem with it. It's, it's interesting. It's an interesting new kind of like update on the story. Whereas, you know, that focused on other themes. This is going to focus on some new themes. So that's interesting. I don't mind that. But yeah, the Seventh Cavalry is really interesting. The fact that it's this group of people who have taken up like Rorschach's ideals, but like twisted them in an evil way. So I thought that was a really interesting idea. And the fact that they kind of adopted Rorschach's image as their own, I thought that was very unique and very creepy actually. Those guys are scary. Like, there's that like video, like I said, of all them and the one guy spouting like the dialogue. So it's just a group of guys standing there in the Rorschach mask and you're like, geez, that's just like eerie. And a very really eerie imagery, good imagery in here. Cause like I mentioned the police who are wearing the masks. Like I said, at first I'm like, what are they bad? But it turns out they wear the masks so the bad guys don't see their faces and can't attack their family. And whoever's a uh, police officer, it's actually a secret. Because at one point, Don Johnson, as like the uh, police chief character, goes to visit the wife of the guy who gets shot up at the beginning. And he's just like, well, what did you tell him that, that he does at night? And she's like, oh, you know, he said he goes to night school and everything. So he's like, okay, we'll just tell everybody that he got like robbed while, you know, while going home from night school. And it's really interesting that at this point in time, basically being a cop is being a superhero because you know they have secret identities they don't tell people what they do at night and they're always covering their faces and aside from the general officers who have you know the yellow thing covering their faces everyone else has like a different costume there's this one officer who wears all red and has a red ski mask or the Tim Blake Nelson character who has this like silver like mask over his face or even Regina King's character like the hood and everything and it's like that's essentially her uniform now that we've kind of disbanded superheroes and superheroes are not a thing anymore now basically the police have become the heroes and I thought there's a very unique concept and very cool and also speaking of that there is still some connections to the superheroes of the past there's this uh, thing that keeps popping up in the background this like TV movie called like American Hero Story about the Minutemen from the 1940s which I thought was really cool I thought that was really kind of a fun kind of meta type of thing I like that um 
There is one quick mention of Dr. Manhattan, who was living on Mars, who they seem to be, like, monitoring. So that's what Dr. Manhattan was doing after the end of Watchmen, which I'm like, okay, he just went back to Mars? But whatever, that's, he's there. I'm not sure if he'll come into play later on, but that's what he's doing right now. He's hanging out on Mars. And, of course, there's that one scene where you see really briefly on a newspaper, it says, Adrian Veidt, like, officially declared dead. So Adrian Veidt is apparently dead. But then you get to the scenes with Jeremy Irons. Which, they don't say it in the episode, but it's pretty much been confirmed that he is playing Adrian Veidt. I'm not sure if that's, like, a spoiler, if that's, like, ruining it for anybody, but they confirmed that in, like, the when they announced him. So he is Adrian Veidt, who apparently everybody thinks is dead, and he seems to just be, like, living alone in this mansion. And he has these two servants who... There must be something wrong. They're not, they're not, like, I don't understand because they act weird. And there's this one bit where they're like celebrating the anniversary and they made a cake for him. And the one, the like butler character, like hands him a horseshoe to cut the cake. And Vice just like, no, that's, that's, that's a horseshoe. And he's like, oh, would a knife be better? So what's up with those guys? Like, what, what is Vite doing? What's going on with Adrian Vite? I'm really curious about that. I also have to say the casting of Jeremy Irons as Adrian Vite. It's pretty fucking perfect. Like, when I read that, I was like, damn, that's good. I, I could imagine a young Jeremy Irons playing Adrian Veidt in, like, the Watchmen story. So, I love that casting. I think Jeremy Irons is great casting, but they're definitely, like, building up something with him. He's kind of like, he seems like he's going to be something on the side, and then as the show progresses, his character's going to get bigger and more important. But right now, he's just kind of hanging out alone in his mansion, presumably dead, and we'll see where that goes from there. And then the end of the episode has this raid on the 7th Cavalry's uh, place. And that scene was awesome. That scene was crazy. They just start unloading a machine gun into, like, all their cattle. And you have, like, Regina King hiding behind, like, a cattle as it's just getting, like, destroyed and getting, like, di slowly diminished. I'm just, like, insane. And then another thing to add to the cops being superheroes, you see that Don Johnson and this other cop are flying in a ship that looks just like Archie, Night Owl's ship. So that's another thing to make them like superheroes because they have like the, the superhero ship to fly around in and they used the flamethrower to destroy uh, one of their planes, which I thought was great. Great moment. And then the episode ends with John Johnson's character being duped and he ends up getting hanged by the 7th Cavalry, or presumably, because then you see that old man in the wheelchair like right by the body who ends up calling Regina King over. So I'm like, did, did he have something to do with this? I don't, I'm a little confused on that. But I had a feeling that was going to happen. Like, at the beginning of the episode when Don Johnson's like, if you don't like this idea, then it's my funeral. I'm like, is something going to happen to him at the end? And, yeah. Um, so, presumably he's dead, which is kind of a bummer because I really like Don Johnson. And I would have liked to see more of him in the show. But maybe you will. Flashbacks, maybe. We'll see. But that's how the episode ends. And, of course, the camera pans down to the badge. And when it happened, I'm like, I'm waiting for it. I'm waiting for it. And the blood drips on it, like the comedian's badge. And I was like... Of course. I knew it was going to happen, but I liked it. So yeah, really interesting start, and I'm really curious to see, like, how the rest of the show plays out. I liked returning to this world, but seeing it from a different, like, era, like, 30 years after the story of Watchmen. I'm really curious about that. I like seeing the visual callbacks. Like, there's some stuff that kind of made me laugh, like, during that interrogation scene, and they're flashing, like, pictures and stuff. And you see the picture of Mount Rushmore, and Nixon's head is on there, too, so I'm like, of course. So a lot of good, like, callbacks to, like, the story of Watchmen. That helps if you've read the book and everything. But yeah, really interesting start, and I'm really curious to see where they go with next for this show. So yeah, that's episode one of HBO's Watchmen, and that's about it for now. And until next time, I'll talk to you guys later.